So we lived abroad for a number of years in the Netherlands and now we've moved back to Vienna and this is the Austrian Viennese culture shock that we got. So we lived abroad for a number of years as we just mentioned and these are the things that we noticed most when we moved back to Vienna. Now some of these things might apply to all of Austria, others might just apply to Vienna but I think these are the things that you will notice if you move here. So first and foremost, the grumpiness. And the grumpiness is something that you you feel it after some time living in Vienna, like, like especially Vienna for this point, you feel that people are not uh, in a great mood. They are very focused on their self. Are, there's not much of a non-verbal interaction in the underground or at a tram stop. Vienna is known to be one of the rudest cities worldwide and I think it's true. Absolutely. When I was living in Sydney and I tell people that I was from Vienna, often that was one thing that they knew about Vienna. They're like, oh yeah, we want holiday there. Everyone's really rude. And I always used to pass it off that it was like kind of an in-joke and no one really means the rudeness. It's not how it felt, but it's, it's still there. And the next thing is that everybody still smokes. Now this is very different to Australia or the Netherlands. It, cigarettes, 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 yes, cigarettes, <laughs> cigarettes, and not so much other things, right? But like, I started a new job, and everyone was surprised when I they asked if I wanted to go for a cigarette, and I'm like, well, I don't smoke, and they're like, you don't smoke, really? Yeah, and and for everybody who has long hair, it's terrible to go into bars or restaurants. One thing we really noticed is that people don't generally do as much small talk as they do in other places. Like, especially since we've become parents, just walking around in the, in the playground with our kid, parents sort of avoid each other more here, whereas, especially in the Netherlands, like, there'd always be a bit of conversation that would just sort of happen. Yeah, I mean, we have rare exceptions. Today we met a very nice uh, daddy at a, play, uh, at a playground, and that was fantastic, but it's very rare. So we don't say that it's not happening at all, but it's not that common. Yeah, another one is Austrians like to be naked. <laughs> they love being naked. It's, it's, it's a bit awkward at first, but then you, you get used to it quite quickly. And there's a lot of like places that offer these kind of spa things and you just get used to seeing everybody naked. Yeah, Thermaldeda, they are called here. And you go there, you enjoy, and, and you go to a sound or whatever. It's a really nice culture. I grew up like this and I really love it. So that's something positive I think they, they are very fine with how they look naked and they have a lot of beaches where you can go like the separate areas where you can you know now when they're not naked you might see Austrians run around in those classic lederhosen and dirndl this is not so much of a Viennese thing to be honest it happens more in the countryside but it's it's kind of a funny fashion to be but, wearing. But they have it in Vienna too. It, it does happen but special it's special locations yeah. and things and, and ladies like to push everything well, up. Well, the Viennese what they are, very, are very pushy yuppy, whereas the country ones are a bit more demure, is that the word? Is there a difference? I don't know. Something that you will notice when you live here for a bit longer than just a week, Austrians like to follow the rules. So for example, Austrians don't jaywalk and in general they, they really follow the rules, they take everything very seriously and uh, they, they are good employees, I think. And along that comes with that is that Austrians absolutely love bureaucracy, especially in Vienna, like the social system is, it has a pretty good setup that you get you get pretty good funds and support and stuff, but you need to hand in a hell of a lot of documents in order to apply for anything. So that, that's always very strict here. The next thing is that everyone always has slippers when you go inside a house, right? You always you always take your shoes off and then usually you're offered slippers to wear and stuff. And I know this happens in a lot of other cultures, but it's one of those things that if you if you come from a culture that doesn't do it at all, like say Australia, then it, it's, it's a really weird idea. And Austrians like good, good, well cooked farmer food, I would call it. I, it's very deftig, you know, like schnitzel. Hardy, sturdy. Yes, yeah, sturdy. Uh, or uh, Kaiserschmarrn, Sachertorte, Mohnnudeln, you know. It, it, everything is very tasty and they also like the, their desserts. And this shows uh, in, one, uh, in, in the older generation, I would say, quite a bit. <laughs> It's very common to, for all the Austrian guys to have to have beer bellies. That's that's a thing. I mean, we notice a huge difference there to, to the Netherlands. Absolutely. The the other thing is Sundays. If you like getting stuff done on a Sunday, forget about it. 
it's really the whole city just shuts down on a Sunday. You can go to church or you can go to like a virtual stand, a sausage stand, right? Or to your gym. <laughs> or, or, or to your gym, possibly. Yeah, usually, yes. But but all businesses like stores or, or anything, banks, everything is shut. And that's, that's something that if you ask any Viennese person, they're like, oh yeah, you know, you, you sort of learn to work around it and live around it and stuff. But if you've lived anywhere else and you've started to get used to like doing your grocery shopping on, on a Sunday evening or something like that, it just becomes this really annoying, unnecessary thing where you're like, well, I could get stuff done. Also, especially if you work a nine to five job, then that means you've always got this mad rush, like Friday evening or Saturday morning when the shop still might be open to get your grocery shopping done, which is, it, it just, yeah, that kills me. And then the cashiers here, they are also like, boom, 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 boom. You need to be so fast, it's so stressful. They don't, they don't bag shit yeah. for you, right? So no. it's just all the cashier does is, is, is drag stuff along the scanner and just passes it on and leaves it in a pile on the other side of the thing. And you need to quickly get to the other side. Very quickly. And, 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 and pack your bags really quickly because as soon as you're done, as soon as you've paid, the next one will thing and they'll start just start throwing the groceries at your groceries and stuff. And so shopping can be a bit of a stressful experience there. Oh yeah. Yeah, and since we moved back uh, from Amsterdam, and in Amsterdam we felt very free uh, here, we always had the feeling somebody's behind our shoulders and, and, and watching us. You know, I, 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 I don't know, you have the truth? Yeah, absolutely. I, like the Viennese, they all seem to like to talk about each other. Everyone has their nose in everyone else's business. They're checking business. on each other. It's a bit weird And, and when you walk down the streets, you often get like, especially old ladies that just sort of spend their days like looking out the window and often they'll get involved and tell people off and stuff. It's, it's, it's a bit strange here. That's, that's something you really notice. Yeah. In Amsterdam, I also would go out of the house in my trackies in a very comfortable outfit, you know. Here in Vienna, I rather not. <laughs> People are generally quite well dressed in Vienna and, and it feels like you have to dress a certain standard. Otherwise, you do, you do feel it if you're Yeah, if you're you not should fit in and then you feel better if you stick out of the mass. Uh, you get a weird vibe, I would say. Yeah. Maybe, maybe uh, you have a similar experience or a completely different experience, let us know. <laughs> the next thing is how, how Austrians in general treat children. There's a very uh, fixed idea of a hierarchical structure within the society here and and the older people seem to feel that they, they command a lot of respect. and. And it's not uncommon for like really old people to tell off little children, even if they have no relation and stuff. Like that happens quite a lot, and that's it's a bit strange. Along with the hierarchical structure, of course, there is the other thing that people and this the Germans don't do this, but Austrians do. They use their university title as part of their name, right? So if you if you say you got a master's degree, that means your name is officially. Magista, as in masters, so and so, and whatever your name is, right? And that's like a title you have on all your ID and everything. They say like uh, Frau Magista, and sometimes they even leave out the the surname. It's just like Frau Magista. <laughs> it's it's something that is very uncommon worldwide, and and it really confusing. feeds into the it really feeds into the hierarchy as well, doesn't it? Public transport. Now this is one point that I feel Vienna really has now. The public transport here is is fantastic. I mean, it's on time. It's there's there's a whole variety of different things from trams to buses to subways and stuff. And it's really easy to get around Vienna very quickly. It yes. takes pretty much half an hour wherever you're going. Another thing that we've noticed since we moved back from the Netherlands People in Austria, people are very religious. So I think it's a, a, over 90% who uh, claim to have a religion and most of the times it's Catholic. Catholic yes. It's pretty much, it's very much a Catholic country. Now, even if people are not so religious per se, they still identify by their religion very strongly. So people who, who aren't interested in the religion in general will still say, oh, I'm Roman Catholic, because that's sort of like what everyone is. And the weird thing is, if you get baptized here, then you sort of belong to the Roman Catholic Church. And so once you finish studying and you're earning money, they expect you to pay to pay the church tax. Why right? it? And this, this is actually enforced by the law. So what you have to do is you actually have to write a letter declaring that you're stepping out of the Catholic Church, upon which they'll send you a letter explaining 
you know, all the benefits, well, yeah, yeah, the, the benefits yeah. that you've lost. I mean, like you can't be buried in a church burial ground. You can't be a godfather, godmother. You, you need to pay around 1% of your yearly salary to the church. Quite expensive, I think. And uh, we lived uh, for seven months as well in the countryside. And in the countryside, when you don't go to church at, on Sundays, it's like a bit of... You yes. know what I mean? It is definitely <laughs> expected. And I mean, in the countryside, you've also got... You've also got um, statues of Jesus every every 10 meters, you know, Jesus on the cross yes. with blood all over him. They like this, uh, but we really preferred the way in the Netherlands where everybody could have whatever belief they want to have and nobody uh, tried to force their belief on them. I get the feeling a little bit more here in Austria. So those are our thoughts on Vienna. Of course, the thing is that we may sound a little more negative. We miss Amsterdam so much. We cannot wait to move back to the Netherlands, to be honest. We will stay uh, as long as it is necessary in Austria at the moment. And it has also fantastic things. There's the Prat in Vienna, one thing, which is this really old um, amusement park. And it's, it's, it's relatively central. They have cool stuff. museums also for kids, uh, nice playgrounds and, and the public transport is really fantastic. The food and is great. The food is great. The desserts are fantastic. We should stay away from it to not yeah, get, not get them. too fat. Especially you know? because we're not riding our bikes anymore. We're taking the underground. But we definitely feel that Vienna isn't exactly our vibe. It may, it may be your vibe, absolutely. I mean, that's a thing. It's a good city if you want to be comfortable, if you, if you want to have a peaceful life. Vienna is a fantastic city for that. Well organized, but I think uh, you always need to go with your own vibration and wh where your heart wants you to be, right? And our hearts, they want to be in Amsterdam. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you found it help helpful. Let us know your opinion. So if you did like this video, give it a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe, follow us on whatever the social media because we're really exciting with all that stuff. And we will see you next time. Mwah, Todd Sims! Do it!